Okay, so there's something I wanted to talk about for a while that I get asked about a fair amount by people who are new to the scene, and that is asexuality and kink or fetish, and whether you can be asexual or demisexual and still participate in the kink scene and enjoy different fetishes. So I am wearing my latex as you can see and I thought I should just film this and hopefully it'll help some of you out a little bit. So if you haven't heard the term asexual before, it's basically someone who isn't sexually attracted to others and doesn't really seek out sex or sexual fulfillment. Demisexual is someone who doesn't feel um, sexual attraction to someone unless they like them. Obviously everyone's sexual preferences are very very specific to them and I'm not going to stand here and tell you too much about sexuality but I do want to go into ways that you can enjoy fetish without it having to be sexual stuff because a lot of people they look at Fifty Shades of Grey or they look at um, BDSM media which makes everything look like you have to be having sex to do anything in the fetish sphere where that's simply not true and in fact a lot of people actually don't have sex when they're practicing kink because they're exploring different things that they're interested in so although obviously a fetish is inherently sexual or it's something that you enjoy it's something that you're attracted to or your brain stimulated by in some way it doesn't always have to end with sex so I think this is like a really good way for someone who is asexual or who isn't feeling like having sex very much to reconnect with their partner. So it might not even be that you're not sexually attracted to someone, it might just be that just now you want to explore different things. I'll try and think of a few YouTube safe examples. So maybe one could be latex. So a lot of people either love the sound of latex they love that it's shiny, they love the feeling of it on their skin. So you could say, I want to buy some latex and I want to dress up. I really love the feeling of it on my skin. I love when my partner wears that. I love helping them polish it. So you could have sex while you're wearing latex, but the act of helping someone put the latex on, looking at them in it, isn't necessarily sexual. So you could do things like you want to try rope work or shibari and you get very into tying either yourself, making yourself little harnesses, if you're with a partner, you know, tying them up, making different shapes of their body. So you're really exploring your connection with yourself and that other person. So yeah, again, you're not having sex, but if you're with a partner, and you're tying them up or you're putting them in certain positions, you are very much connected with them. And also it gives you the chance to have a really in-depth conversation about your likes and dislikes. So if you are someone who's really struggling, who feels pressured to get into like a very, very sexual side of kink and fetish, there's so many ways that you can try different things that you might just be interested in. Because you could say, I want to sit at my partner's feet and have my head patted. That makes me feel good. So although that is also on the kink spectrum, it's not necessarily having sex. I think this is what I'm trying to get at. So there's so many things you could do which are either bonding with your partner, it's something that personally excites you, or something that you're exploring. So if you completely take away the possibility of having sex, you are doing these things because you enjoy them. There's nothing wrong with them leading to sex, but that's not the purpose of doing these things. The purpose of doing these things is for the pure enjoyment of the action itself. Because at its core, every fetish or every kink is really accessible to, I would say, most people in some form. And I think too many people get caught up on trying to put themselves into little boxes trying to, you know, label everything, trying to make, like, oh, I've seen this in a film and they did this and they did that, so I have to do that, where I only like one part of that. So take that one part you like and explore it, which is 
what um, BDSM is very very good at allowing you time to really communicate and get to know yourself which I think is often missed out if you're just watching adult media you're probably looking at quite an extreme end when I make media myself I make it very specifically for people who are interested in a certain thing so I will use language that perhaps is a little scary to onlookers who aren't in that field I will say things that might make someone go oh my goodness that's so intense but if you are someone who enjoys that already these are words and scenarios that you play with a lot so everything that you're looking at which is adult media is obviously very highly edited and it's not to be believed that that's how things happen obviously every single thing that you see it should have complete consent carried out beforehand if it's between two people so even if you're seeing something that is quite rough or looks like they haven't negotiated they should have I'm not saying they always have but any professional production will have had communication and consent any personal productions or amateur production should also have had those conversations so after that little tangent I've kind of spoken about how you can use kinks or fetishes to explore what you like without necessarily having to be sexual but what if you want to go to an event so you might be worried that when you go to fetish or kink events that you're going to be forced into something that people are going to be overly sexual towards you maybe that it's not the place for you that sort of thing and i would say that compared to a normal nightclub or a normal event fetish events tend to be some of the most safe and well organized because they have to be there is absolutely no space for abuse in a fetish event and you will find that if you tell anyone that someone has made you uncomfortable that person will be told to leave and if they're not told to leave and i was there i'd be very very unhappy and so would a lot of people so you always have everyone else at the event even if you're new will kind of be looking out for you and there is a very much a community atmosphere of making sure that everyone is safe and you know a lot of these venues as well there will just simply be no sex at all during the fetish event there could be depending on the venue maybe there's not a rule against it but a lot of these clubs do not have the licenses to allow people to have sex so there's sometimes rules about that there's you know some parties you go to are simply called munches there are people who meet up and they all have a similar interest so these different kind of meets are all aimed at different kinds of people so obviously you're not going to go to a puppy party or like a kennel club event if you're not into pet play and likewise if you really hate the idea of people having sex in the same room as you you're not going to go to an orgy there are certain events for certain things and the event organisers usually make it very very clear it's also if you're going on your own there's absolutely nothing wrong with contacting one of the organisers in advance they're normally pretty happy to kind of take you around introduce you to some people or maybe like keep coming checking on you and you'll be totally fine I feel like I've kind of run out of things I could say about kind of going into the kink scene as someone who isn't necessarily interested in having sex with people but yeah when you're either doing your own thing or you're at events people will be very very open to what you have to say they'll be very good at listening and they definitely should not push you to do anything you don't want to do I think it's just a really really good way to explore a different side of yourself and to really connect with your partner without having to worry about you know not enjoying sex you can enjoy other things with your relationship and you can still work on that connection you can build it if you are someone who likes to be on your own you can go to a room full of people who all have the same interest who are all very happy to be friendly and just because i'm aiming this video at kind of complete beginners if you are going to go to a fetish event make sure that you follow the dress code it doesn't always have to be something super expensive or fancy but just read what it says follow that follow any etiquette instructions that they have um, if so a common one is 
don't go up to people who are involved in play, don't try and insert yourself into people's situations. And I think the thing is, it's okay if someone's talking to you, if you ask them if you can be involved or you can make a comment and you could say, oh, I would like to try that. Or you can approach someone and say, would you like to do this with me? And you just respect their answers, just communicate a little bit and you will be fine. Just there has been an upswing recently in people going to events who don't understand the sort of etiquette and code and just don't touch anyone without consent please don't be weird don't ruin it for everyone else because we need these spaces to be super safe for everyone and with that i hope this was helpful and if you are sort of a more asexual leaning sexuality that made you a bit more confident about trying kink and not feeling like you had to be having sex because yeah a lot of fetish and kink is about you know just exploring yourself and having fun rather than it necessarily having to be about having sex with someone so i will hopefully see you for another video at some point i have no idea of what it will be about and make sure to like subscribe and comment